Would you like to know how to get more consistent within WRC23? Well, stay around as I guide you through some tips for you to use to implement them into your own driving style and watch as those seconds keep dropping off your times. First up, we have the snow and ice. I always think of snow and ice very similar to gravel, yet everything you do is drawn out and takes longer for the car to do what you're asking it to do. When you're out there on the snowy track, it is super important to take it slow and steady. You might feel the urge to go full throttle or crank that steering wheel, but it's essential to calm down and let the car do its thing. Rushing it will just lose you time. Be smooth. But this goes much further than the same smoothness that we use on tarmac and gravel. Being smooth with your inputs allows you to leave less time on the table, it will keep you more stable and less time will be put into making corrections on the steering wheel or pedals. This is especially true if you're on controller. There are some crazy good controller players out there and I guarantee they are super smooth when approaching their inputs. Good vision. With all that white stuff around, it is easy to lose track of where you are going. That's why we need to keep our eyes peeled and focused on the road ahead. It helps us steer in the right direction and spot those tricky corners and always listen to what your co-driver is telling you. So remember, be patient, stay smooth and keep your eyes on the road. These tips will help you conquer the snowy track like a pro. Another big tip for you is if the subscribe button looks like this, an easy fix is to left click on it so you stay up to date with future uploads. With gravel, the same fundamentals apply as when driving on snow. So we still want to be patient and smooth and to be looking ahead, but you could probably be more aggressive with your steering inputs as we do want to get the car into a slide, but too much of a slide and that is lost time. We do have slightly more grip than on snow, but it is still very little. So in order to be more consistent, we need to learn and master some of these techniques just to help us squeeze out more time on the track. Weight transfer is just not about shifting the car's weight about, but understanding how it works. As you enter a corner, decelerating shifts the car's weight towards the front wheels. This gives you better steering and allows the tyres to dig into the gravel for a bit more grip. As you exit the corner, accelerating pushes the weight to the back, stabilising the car and providing real wheel traction. Mastering weight transfer also helps reduce tyre wear, allowing for better longevity throughout a race. Trail braking is an advanced technique that goes against the intuitive feel of letting go of the brake while turning. Instead, you maintain brake pressure into the corner it allows you to adjust the car's line mid-corner and save you if you misjudge your entry speed. As you continue to steer, gradually release the brake until you've reached the apex of the turn. This keeps the weight on the front wheels, providing better steering response and preventing understeer. Learning the little traits of trail braking can be challenging, but rewarding. Choosing the correct racing line in a gravel racing is crucial and more complicated than it seems. Unlike asphalt racing, gravel conditions can change quickly. Deeper gravel provides less grip, while compacted areas offer a little bit more. Therefore, it is essential to continuously assess the road conditions and adjust your racing line accordingly. And one more skill I think is crucial to any aspiring rally driver is learning the Scandi flick. This is a stylish and strategic manoeuvre. This technique is helpful for turns that are too sharp for traditional cornering methods. The initial flick in the opposite direction loads the suspension on one side of the car and when you steer back into the turn, the loaded suspension helps whip the car around allowing for a quicker and more effective corner. The timing of the flick and the subsequent counter steer are crucial. Getting it wrong could lead to a spin or a lot of control. Therefore it does take a lot of practice but with time you will master it. Compared to gravel, you need to be a lot smoother with your inputs and try not to be as aggressive with your steering wheel or controller. Because a smooth racing line is important, similar to circuit racing where you gradually open up the steering wheel past the apex. On the brakes you want more of a progressive approach. Start with a hard initial input due to the downforce and then trial the brake pressure off as you get close to the corner and begin to turn. Unlike on gravel, you don't want to slide the car around too much you almost want to treat tarmac like you would a racing circuit. Not only does it cost you time, but it also impacts your tyre wear. And when you are doing a 30 km stage, you will feel the difference by the end if you were aggressive early on. A smooth driver should have a better performance overall than one that pushes hard from the very beginning. So just a little bit of a voice on terms of setup for tarmac rallies. You'd want to go with a lower ride height and softer suspension. You will also want to go with a higher gear ratio and final drive if it is a very high speed location. 
When it comes to bumps, you'll want to have a slightly softer rebound on your dampers so that the tyres maintain better contact with the ground. The wheels will come back down quicker, although if you have your dampers too soft, the car will oscillate, which is not good for performance. There are so many other things that go into being consistent. In this video, I've highlighted what I think the main points are for each surface type. In no uncertain terms is this me saying you must do these, but I feel they will strongly help you. If you have liked what you have watched, then you can support the channel by subscribing and leave a like to help the video get seen by others. Let me know what you think of these techniques down below and thanks for watching. But everything I have just told you in this video is completely useless unless you have the right setup to go with them, so go check out these videos here.